Good morning. Will you pray with me as we prepare for the Lord's table? Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we just thank you for the truth of the words we just sung. You are an amazing God. You are an amazing Savior. Lord, we thank you that you would allow your son to come from heaven to earth, to live a perfect life, to die a horrific death on a cross, to conquer death in his resurrection, that we could have eternal life. Father, we praise you for that. We thank you. And we pray all these things in the beautiful name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. As we prepare for the Lord's table, would you open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2? Philippians chapter 2. If you were here for equipping hour, uh, Josh taught this morning on the church's instruction to sing. I did not realize Josh would be doing equipping hour when I picked this passage, but we're going to be looking at a passage that the early church probably did sing. Uh, if, you didn't, if you weren't here for equipping hour, I would recommend going to our website under ministries, equipping hour, and you can listen to Josh's equipping hour message. When Paul wrote Colossians, he probably had these verses in mind. Uh, the verses we're going to be looking at, they're, uh, they're poetic, and many do believe that the early church sang these as Christian hymns. We're going to be dropping into uh, mid-chapter in chapter 2. Uh, Paul is calling believers, calling Christians to imitate, imitate Christ. And we're going to pick it up in verse 6. As we read, let's consider what Jesus has done, what Jesus has accomplished. Will you read with me? We're going to be reading verses 6 through 11. Who, and that who is Jesus, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So this, for this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on the earth and under the earth in that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Verse 6 reminds us that Jesus is and has always been God. Verse 7 reminds us that Jesus is coming to earth. He emptied himself. Jesus made himself nothing he doesn't mean he stopped being God, but he laid that aside, submitting to the humiliation of becoming a man. Scripture is clear that Jesus was always God, and he truly became man. Ver verse 8 reminds us that Jesus, God, after the, hum, the humbling of incarnation, become, God becoming man, he fur, further humbled himself to the point of death, death on a cross, by people that hated him. Verse 9, we could have a, a full sermon on what has taken place in verse 9, but I want you to Get this aspect in verse 9. We are reminded 
that Jesus, the exaltations, Jesus' victory over sin, victory over death, he was resurrected from the dead. In verses 10 and 11, because we see that Jesus, what Jesus has done and what he accomplished in verses 6 through 9, the entire universe is called to worship Jesus as Lord. In a moment, you're going to receive a little packet with a wafer and a cup of juice. The, the wafer is a reminder of Jesus' body that he gave up, that he voluntarily gave up. He freely gave himself. And the juice is a reminder of the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of sin. Christians, will you take time to remember who Jesus is, what he has done, what he accomplished when he conquered sin in our behalf? But maybe you're here and you're not a Christian. I, I need to give a warning from Scripture. Although we're glad that you're here, if you're not a Christian, this time of our service is not intended for you. This part of the service is for those that are trusting in what Jesus Christ has accomplished as Savior and Lord. So when the elements come, just allow them to pass by you. We don't want you to be embarrassed. But this is not a time for you to participate. For everyone that is not participating, I would ask you to spend some time considering this question. If you're not participating, will you take some time to consider this question I'm going to ask you here? Scripture is clear, and it says that God is perfectly holy. And I want you to, to think about this if you're not participating. How can an unholy sinner stand in the presence of a holy God? How can an unholy sinner stand in the presence of a holy God? There is only one way that an unholy sinner can stand in front of a holy God, and it's found in Scripture in the verses 2 Corinthians 5.21. He, and that's God, made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. If you don't understand what that means, feel free to, to speak to me, to speak to somebody near you. For, for the students, if you'd like to understand what is taking place in that verse, how you can stand before a holy God. Students, would you talk to your parents? This verse is our only hope. So the men are going to come and they're going to bring the elements of communion. When you've prepared your heart, will you partake? Men, please come and serve us.